In this video, we'll talk about the normal probability plot or the normal quantile plot and how we can use Excel to plot it. We use the normal probability plot or the normal quantile plot to examine if a data set is approximately normally distributed or not. It plots the observed values x versus the normal score y. So on the x axis, it should be the observed value. And on the y axis, it is the normal score. The normal score is the expected z score of the data values, assuming that the data are normally distributed. For the small data sets, anytime n is less than or equal to 30, we construct a normal probability plot to check for its normality. If the points on the normal probability plot do follow a linear pattern, then we conclude that the data are drawn from a normal distribution. So these are the definition and the rule. Okay, so what are the procedures? We have five steps here. Step number one, sort the data from smallest to largest. And then we assign a rank to each value. The smallest value has the rank number one. And then the largest value has the rank n, depending on how many data that we have. n is the number of the values. And after that, the step number three, we compute the percentile for each value by using the formula i minus 0 0.5 divided by n. i is just the rank that we got from step two and n is the total number of the data points. And in step four, we find the corresponding z-score for each of the percentile in the step three. And after that, we just make a scatter plot. The horizontal axis would include all the observed values, and the vertical axis would be the expected z-scores. All right. Let's uh, look at one example. Let's say I want to construct the normal probability, probability plot or the normal quantile plot um, of the below numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 numbers. So this is a small sample size, uh, less than 30, right? So we need to construct a normal probability plot on a normal quantile plot to make sure uh, the data is coming from a normally distributed population. All right, so these are the observed value. We put a label, we type the observed value, and we enter the 10 value that we have. And then after we enter that, we need to sort the data from smallest to largest. So right now it is at random, right? It is not in the order. So I highlight everything. I click on the tab data and then I click on the top one here, A um, with the letter A to Z. So we click on that and it will sort smallest to largest, right? Going from A to Z. And then you will get uh, the list on the right like this. So it's, go, it's going uh, from the smallest value all the way to the largest value, 32. Okay, let's do it here. Let's try it on Excel. So I type the, the values here. I highlight everything. I click on the tab data. I want to go from smallest to largest. So I go from A to Z, short smallest to largest. I click that and you can see right away that it is going from the smallest value. I think I have one extra. Let me fix that. All right, I got one typo. So let's do it again here and then click this. And here you go. We go from 14 all the way to 32. So that is the first step. We sort the data from smallest to largest. Now I need to find a rank. Okay, I need to find a rank. So on the next 
column, I just simply type the title rank, right? Rank. Well, we have the rank. Uh, this is this is the first one, right? This is the first one, so it should be one. And then this is the second one. This should be second. And um, I want uh, to have the rank for all of them. So I want to go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten down there, right? So this is the um, um, the increasing uh, from um, by one unit so that easy right we we just copy the the, the first two value so Excel know the pattern of the number and now we just simply drag them down all the way to the last number then it automatically knows that we increase one value each to get to the next one and then we have the 10 numbers so there there are 10 ranks one two three four five up to ten and I, let me just call this is the I, the letter I for the rank. Okay, this is the rank. Next, we need to find the percentile for each of the rank. Using the formula, we just talk about that. I minus 0 0.5 divided by N. Okay, so now I need to find the percentile. I make another column. I, I call it percentile. And then I... I Press echo, right? Press echo. Remember the formula is I minus 0 0.5. I is the rank. So the rank minus 0 0.5. Close and then divide by N. N is the total numbers that we have. There are 10 value. So we divide by 10. So that is the percentile for the first one. And then we want to find the percentile for every single number down here. So using the same formula except that we use different ranks. So the first one you use the first rank, the second one we use the second rank and so on. So the same formula we just drag it all the way down here. So this is your percentile, right, for everything. And then lastly, we need to find a z-score. Right, we need to find a z-score. Z we need to calculate the corresponding z-score for the given percentiles. Now, these percentiles, they are the left area. And so we can just use the functions norm.s.inv because this is the standard normal distribution. So if we use the dot s, then we don't have to include the mean of zero in the standard deviation of one. The function has those as the default value. So let's use norm dot s dot inverse inverse norm because the we are given the area under the curve on the left side, and we want to find a z score. So that would be the inverse norm function. So norm dot s dot inv the left area. To find a value on the uh, z axis or the x axis. Now, um, I press echo. I I input norm dot s dot inv, and then I use the percentile because this is the left area. Okay, so let's do next column. It's the z score column. So I press echo, and I use norm dot s dot inv. Open parenthesis, and I in Put the percentile and I close it. This is the left area, so it will return the z score, and that is my z score, right? And then I want that for every single percentile. So, using the same formula, I track down everything. So, the only thing that is changed in the formula is the area, which is the percentile. That's why. I drag it down and it will copy down all the percentile for each of the row to the new function. And this is my um, Z score, right? Z score. And then now, after we have everything, we are ready to plot them, right? So the normal probability plot or the normal quantile plot, the x axis would be the observed value. By definition, the observed value is the x axis. And then the z score would be the y axis. So we, we want to let this one to be the x 
this one to be the Y, so we just highlight them. So I highlight the observed value, including the title. And then I press Control to keep it. So I highlight another column for the Z-score. And then I click Insert. And then I use the uh, scatter plot, which is this one, the scatter plot. And then I just use the first option. All right, so this one here is my um, my um, normal quantile plot, right? The observed value would be the x-axis, and then the expected uh, the z-score would be the y value. Now you can also right-click on the point and add the trend line, right? Add the trend line. So you click, right click on all the point, on it as any random point, and then add the trend line. And you can see that uh, you can um, see if all the dots follow a linear pattern or not, right? And if you do that, you can tell that the data points roughly follows a linear pattern. So yes, the data could come from a normally distributed population. Unless you get like random dot over here, over here, up here, and down here, it doesn't follow a straight line. Then the data is not coming from a normally distributed population. But it looks like that it follows, it does follow a, no, uh, a straight line pattern. So we can say it's, it's roughly follow a linear pattern. So yes, it is coming from a normally distributed population. And that is how we use a normal quantile plot to check for the normality of uh, a small sample size.